Welcome back into the Pilgrimage Perspective. This is episode two, part two, the Camino. Father Greg, Father Conrad, and Greg Masiello are going to be talking about the rest of their journey getting to the city of Santiago. They'll talk about what the feeling was when they were finally done. Were they a little bit disappointed? Were they excited? It could be a mixture of both. They're also going to be talking about what advice they might have for you, a future pilgrim of the Camino what you might need to prepare for, what the feelings might be, and just overall advice, and what they wish they would have known before taking this 100 to 500 mile trek. The Pilgrimage Perspective Part 2 of Episode 2, The Camino, starts right now. I think it's it's, it's so interesting that um, you three have this shared experience, probably with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, obviously over the, the, uh, the course that it's been going on for thousands of years. Um, have you ever run into someone who has done it and you kind of just have this instant bond with them? I think people do that almost automatically. You know, when Chris and I start walking, you meet different people, they ask to join you, and then they go off their own way. But wherever we went, we always seemed, there was never, it was always, yeah, it was a bond, I guess. I never thought of that. And then, of course, in the evening, that's when you came and you talked about your experiences. Very different than a vacation, again. Mm -hmm. Pilgrimage is a sacred experience. And I think uh, uh, what I, most of my journals are about the bondings I've had with different people from different countries. Uh, one last example was a young girl from South Korea who asked to walk with me just for just a few kilometers. So Chris said, Father, I'll meet you at the next next uh, town. So she was walking and basically what she asked me was, why do I believe in God? And we were on the top of a mountain. I looked, I says, Juan, look below you. Well, long story short, she went on her way. And then six months after I completed the Camino, uh, she wrote me, sent me pictures from the Camino and said that she had entered a RCIA program in Seoul, South Korea. I think, I think she said taught by a Franciscan too, but it's the bonding is beyond your, uh, or, you know, recognition or it just happened. It's, it's, you know, it's Christ walking with us. When I was in Lyon, I recognized the pack on somebody's back that was, was a American. It was uh, someplace, I think Denver, uh, Grand Teton uh, Mountain. And uh, I just stopped him and I said, hey, are you American? And it, it was a father and son, Owen and Owen. And so I, I spoke with them and I ran into them a few times uh, in Lyon. And uh, about six months later, I was uh, talking to my cousin who had just gone to his uh, class reunion. He said, hey, by the way, Greg, I, there's a guy in our class reunion, Owen, who was on Camino the same time you were on Camino. And I said, no way. Owen and his son, Owen, and he called back and he checked in and it was him. Wow. But even here in the States, you'll run into people that, uh, like I have a little uh, jacket that has Camino on it with a sign. And people will come up and say, oh, you've been on the Camino? I said, yeah. And they say, oh, yeah, I was, you know, there in September of like 2015 or whatever. So I think there's a common bond, too, that they have gone through that, which you've experienced. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know. I remember hiking the Grand Canyon, going from the North Rim all the way to the South Rim. And when you come out of there, there's a sense of accomplishment. On the Camino, there's somewhat of an accomplishment, uh, you know, that you walked all those miles no matter where you started. But I think the thing, too, is that you have done this pilgrimage to honor and find God. And that, that too, is a common bond that a lot of people on the Camino share. Uh, it's it's in we've we've been talking about Santiago and talking about that the completion what was the great father Greg I'll start with you what was the feeling like getting to Santiago and seeing it after all those miles by the time I reached uh the um hill of joy Monte de Gozo my feet were screaming <laughs> we were making up some extra time mm -hmm. And then to actually get to the cathedral was probably about another four and a half miles. And every footstep I took was like, oh, my gosh. It was pure joy when we finally got to the cathedral. 
And what was really joyous too is when you get your certificate, because they will ask you, and I don't want to give too many details about it, but when you hold that, you know, to say, yes, I have joined thousands and thousands of other pilgrims over the centuries that have completed this journey. That was, that was incredible. I, I think one of the, and like we mentioned, uh, if people who are watching this, if you want to learn, see, there it is. Um, that, that to me was one of the coolest things in the movie, The Way with Martin Sheen and Emilio Estevez, seeing those and seeing the, the accomplishment that each of those pilgrims had um, and going into the cathedral, I think it, it was during the mass. It's the Bada, Bada Fu Mayoru. The uh, giant incense. Just watching that fly through the air and seeing five grown men pull it and making sure that it doesn't hit anybody, it doesn't hit the railing. Um, that is just an incredible experience. To be able to see that up, up close in person must just be an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. So when, when I made it to Santiago and I looked at the cathedral for the first time, I thought, wow, it's going to be this great feeling of joy. And when I got there, it was like this, it was anticlimactic almost. I was just oh. like, it, it, it didn't, it didn't, I guess there was so much anticipation mm -hmm. of finally getting there. But boy, when I was in the cathedral and that uh, incense uh, thing was going back and forth, and then right next to me popped up this guy from Japan, Teku from Japan who uh, we had uh, shared a, a simple meal together with the uh, three mayors priests who have community in Shahagun. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just, I, I can't explain the joy I had at that moment, especially with the, uh, uh, that, what do you call it? The giant font of fury aurea uh, going back and forth. It was, that, that to me was like beyond what I uh, expected. Uh, we talk about, you know, getting to the end, but why don't we go back to the beginning about when you decided you wanted to go, uh, what is something you wish you would have known before? Conrad, I'll start with you. What's something that, oh, this piece of knowledge after now that I'm done and standing in Santiago, I wish I would have known at the beginning. Oh, basically, I, again, I had that dream since I was 16. Sure. And um, I guess I've been programmed with the Marine Corps where you just, you come and you uh, adapt and overcome whatever obstacle. But there was really, I guess I w would have been assured, I was worried I would meet up with my uh, a companion. And Chris, what do you, uh, we, I flew to Biarritz. And I guess I wanted to be sure that everything was going to go smoothly. And, and yet, everything did. It was beyond my expectation. So no, I, I think I can't think of anything that I I wanted to be open, attentive, and responsive. And I was learning that whatever's gonna happen, I'm here, there's no going back. You kind of took the let go and let God theory. Yep. I appreciate that. Uh, Greg Masiello, is there anything you wish you would have known? Yeah, I wish I had known uh, the uh, open, attentive, uh, responsive uh, acronym before I went because I, I, you know, I, I only had a month to do it. I had 31 days before I was going to meet my cousins back in, 32 days, I was going to meet my cousins back in uh, Rome. And uh, so, um, long story short, I, I was looking more at the destination than the joy of the journey. Now, on my first night, uh, about uh, probably about 15 kilometers outside of, I made it, uh, 35, 40 kilometers the first night. So I was about 15 kilometers outside of Brancieva. And there was a group of uh, Irish um, uh, uh, women from Ireland who uh, were journeying together. They only took a week off to walk the Camino path. And what, what I could tell was their Camino was a uh, wine tasting tour of the region. Mm. They had only traveled about four miles that day. And they had only had about five miles to go the next day. And uh, at the end, I go, you know, I, I, someday I want to do the Camino that way. As a matter of fact, my, my cousin is the one who uh, knew Owen. We were, we were talking about going next year, but uh, just starting off at Saria. And, uh, uh, and so, so not doing the whole 500 uh, um, miles, uh, but doing, the, uh, doing the, the part that gets you the, uh, the Compostela and uh, just doing a wine tasting tour of that 
I think that it's, it's funny you say that because that leads me to my next question. Is this something that you would do again, any of you? I certainly would. In fact, um, I can't wait to do it. Uh, it's, it's just one of those experiences that you just, at least for myself, you know, I said, I, I just can't do this once. I want to go in the Grand Canyon one more time because that was phenomenal. But, uh, and that was very spiritual for me too. But the Camino, because it is so much in line with our Catholic tradition of pilgrimages and all that. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, one of the prime ones. Um, and I'm sure there were a lot of things that I didn't see that I hopefully can catch again. I definitely would do it again, but I'm looking at other pilgrimages. I uh, the, uh, the Camino Franciscana in Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, when you finish the pilgrimage to the Camino Santiago, there are 90 more kilometers that normally people don't take. And they go toward Finis Terre, which is the end of the earth and the sea. And it's supposed to be very, very uh, mystical and mythical. And I would like to do that 90 kilometers. Rick and I have talked about doing that yet, just to kind of complete um, the Camino. But I think, um, yeah, I mean, once, once you do it, then you, you keep going back to it. I think one of the, the interesting things that I found while on pilgrimage is uh, I felt guilty driving up to um, Laverna and the Carchery because as I'm driving by, all these people in backpacks and walking sticks, and we get to the top, and I think we finished uh, maybe an hour, and the guy who was at the bottom of the hill as we drove by was getting to the top of the hill, and I almost wished I would have done that because – Yes, I appreciate it, and it was great to be able to get in an air-conditioned car on a 105-degree Italy day, um, but it's, it's almost as if you earn what, what you do. Um, so the lesser known and the, maybe the lesser taken one from Florence to Assisi to Rome, that has to be an amazing experience, especially for people who are aware of Franciscan St. Francis. Um, it must just be an, an amazing opportunity to do that, I would say. One time when Conrad and I uh, went to Assisi a week early to do some uh, prepping for the pilgrimage, uh, we ran into a few people. Remember Gabriella? She had been there. Yeah. She had, I remember her name because she was doing the Camino. She mm -hmm. had come from Laverna, and, uh, and uh, she, she was talking about how she felt protected whenever she was on that Camino Pass by uh, Gabriel the Archangel. And uh, she was doing it and uh, very much similar kind of things from the Camino of Santiago, just very much uh, vibrating with uh, uh, some kind of mystical experiences going on. Uh, why, why are these experiences appealing to pilgrims? Why is this something that people put on their bucket list? Um, that they either want to do once, twice, maybe continue to do it more. Why is this so important for, especially people who are Catholic? Why is this important? I think there's so much literature and books that are being published now about the Camino that when I did it back in 2010, I was still not popular. There were very few Americans on the route. And uh, then, of course, the wave uh, was, uh, was uh, broadcast. And then a few are different, writing different books. And there's something about the, the uh, spirituality uh, of now with Pope Francis, this whole idea of, um, you know, of walking with each other. Now, the new encyclical coming out, the Fratelli Tutti, is going to stress, you know, walking together as brothers and sisters toward a more uh, social world, uh, the Dato Si, uh, with the creation um, uh, concern. So I think... Uh, people are starting to um, respond. The COVID experience um, is uh, driving people out, outdoors more and driving them back to the sense of, of, of the earth, our common home. So I, I think it's, it's naturally uh, escalating. I think, too, as Franciscans, uh, because our theology is so incarnational also, I think a pilgrimage kind of ties it all together, body and soul, all of the senses are joined. Uh, whether you've got sore feet or you're enjoying, uh, enjoying a great cup of coffee with some warm milk or a pastry, you know, that all comes into it. And you, you see the wonder of God all meshed in with that. 
Uh, final question, because um, I know everyone, uh, you guys are very busy people, so I appreciate your time today. Um, if you had any advice to anyone who was maybe thinking about doing the Camino, what would you tell them? Can I start that off? Sure. I'd say go. I'm also going to shamelessly plug the book that I wrote. Uh, <laughs> it's written to the stars. I wrote, it's on Amazon. I wrote that. Uh, I just, I just uh, self published it because I wanted to hold on, uh, have something to uh, hold on to afterwards. It's basically my journal that I did along the way, but I would encourage them to go. I, I use as my uh, a pilgrimage Bible, a book called The Art of Pilgrimage by Phil Cousineau. Um, he writes about pilgrimage in general, not necessarily Christian pilgrimage, but the whole idea of pilgrimaging. And one of his principles are, is are, uh, that if you're thinking about the Camino, that means it already has begun. I think I mentioned that before. I said, I would follow, I would follow your dream. And walk. It's the easiest exercise, but that's how you build up your body for it. Just each day, just walk casually, and then you start building up little by little by little, and it makes the Camino a lot easier. Okay. Thank you for your thank you for your time today, guys. I, I really appreciate it. Um, another great episode about an amazing topic, and if you are interested in this, you can give us a call. Uh, the email address will be provided for you at the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. We look forward to episode three, which will be coming out in a couple weeks about high school pilgrimages. This has been the Pilgrimage Perspective. Uh -huh.